Hello everybody and welcome back. I'm Count Christo and this is another Mayo and Taxes 3.0 basic concepts video. Today we're taking a second look at infrastructure. As you may recall, a number of months ago I did a video on this, but things have changed a bit since then and I'd like to do an update that's a little bit better presented and hopefully a little bit clearer for you all to understand now that the open alpha is out. So we're back here in Bohemia and we're going to be taking a look at the infrastructure of Prague. As you can see, Prague has five out of six of the different types of infrastructure, and we're going to take a look at what each of them does, how you can increase the amount of infrastructure you have, and what affects what it will cost for you to increase the amount of infrastructure in a specific province. But first, let's look at some terms as well as where you can access information about infrastructure. This is the property tab, and using A we can cycle through the different pages of it. First, I'm going to give you a couple of definitions about property. Property will be the subject of a second, more in-depth uh, video, but don't, we'll just get some basic terms for now. There's property. Properties, you have units of property, and those units are owned by uh, groups, elites, uh, with the state being one of those groups that can own property. Property is subdivided into resources and districts on a basic, not totally accurate level but on a basic level resources are in the countryside and districts are in the cities resources there is a limit to how many um, units of a particular resource how many units of property of a particular resource there can be in each province that limit is set at the beginning of the game and it cannot change districts however there is no such limit when you own property you make money from the industries that use that property and the as you can see, the diff here are the different groups that own it and the different amounts they're making from it. As I say, I'm going to do another video that goes more in-depth into property, but I look at this mostly because it's on the same tooltip that has the infrastructure stuff, and I honestly could not tell you why that is the case, because infrastructure is not property. No one owns it, and it does not have industry taking place within it. So honestly, this should just be a separate tooltip thing, but that's just like my opinion, man. So let's talk about infrastructure. On this, you can see a couple of things, and we're going to do a few terms here as well. There are infrastructure units, so amenities, which you may not be able to read because the text is quite small. Uh, there are 36 units of amenity here, which is giving us level 3 amenities. That's the infrastructure rank, and the number is the number of infrastructure units. You can also see that there is an infrastructure fund, there is an elite and a state investment in that fund, and then there is a certain amount of maintenance spending coming out of that fund. Maintenance spending is used to buy the uh, goods that are acquired to maintain each of these different types of infrastructure. If you want to see what good is used, hover over that individual type of infrastructure and you will see what it is. So for example, here for harborage per unit per month, you need 0.05 naval and 0.05 industrial goods. And the infrastructure fund will seek to buy that in order to maintain that infrastructure. If the fund doesn't have enough money, then the infrastructure will decay. You will lose units over time until the books can be balanced again. If the infrastructure fund continues to grow, as you can see that uh, it is very slightly here, the elites are investing 0.5 ducats or so, more than is required, then eventually the infrastructure fund will be invested in the province, increasing the size of one of these infrastructures. When the number of units reaches the indicated amount here, so for example, there are 36 out of 60 amenity units, what that means is not that there's 36 of a possible maximum 60, it means that once it reaches 60, there will be an increase to the infrastructure rank. So once it gets there, it'll increase the rank and give you more bonuses. There is absolutely no benefit to you or to the local province for having more infrastructure units but not an extra infrastructure rank. If you're halfway between three and four, you get the bonuses of three. They have hard break points. They are absolute, not discrete bonuses. So let's take a look. Ah, yes, I should mention, these are some in some places, for example, on the wiki, referred to as buildings. I will link the wiki page in the description, by the way. This is the system that effectively replaces buildings in previous versions of Mayo and Taxes and indeed in the vanilla game. The building system in the code is being used for tax, but the building system that you need to worry about interacting with, that's been replaced with infrastructure. So let's take a look at each of the different types 
of infrastructure and what they do for you. And then we will take a look at how you increase the levels of your infrastructure. First off, amenities. Amenities here, they have ranks between one and seven. And what they do is they support the local urban population. These have a discreet, discrete cost, meaning amenities in any province in the world will cost the same amount of units of material to build. That doesn't mean they'll always cost the same amount of ducats, because remember, of course, the units of material and the labor that go into building them could vary in price given supply and demand, etc., etc. But the amount of units you need is always the same. There's no local conditions that affect the cost in units for each rank of amenities. If you need to see the specific numbers for what, how many people each rank supports, go to the wiki. I wrote those bits, so I want you to use them. Um, basically, if you have more, here we have level three, so we can put 80,000 urban housing. If you have more than 80,000 people living in cities, then you're going to have uh, higher death rates, and basically the urban population is going to grow a lot slower, and if it's significantly over it, it can indeed decline. Next, we have irrigation. Irrigation here is rank, sorry, that's garrisons. Irrigation here is rank four, which means our crop and fire productivity goes up by 60%. It goes 10, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100% increase between rank one and rank six. Uh, the number of units that are required uh, for irrigation uh, depend on the maximum potential size of the farmlands property in the province. So if we look here, the maximum farmland you can have in this province is 109, and indeed there are 109 units of farmland property right now, and that will affect the cost to increase the level of irrigation. Remember, again, that's the cost in units and in labor. Those, the cost of the units and labor can itself also vary. Next up, sorry, just let me keep going on my, my little spreadsheet over here. Next up, we have pathing. Pathing is basically roads. Of course, there's more complicated things than that. You know, I'm sure this includes uh, way stations and, and, you know, stables and all that good stuff. Pathing affects the travel time, and it very dramatically affects travel time. Uh, as you will note here at level three, the base travel time for communication efficiency is reduced down to 25% of its original amount, which is pretty crazy. It also increases commerce output, as well as increasing friendly movement speed and hostile movement speed by a smaller amount. The cost for in units and labor for pathing varies depending on the terrain, as well as the... Um, size of the province uh, so if you have really tough terrain then it's going to be significantly harder to uh, to build in that particular province which of course makes a whole lot of sense so that is pathing nice and simple next harborage and you will note that you can get harborage inland on major rivers harborage affects the embark cost that's how long it takes to get on or off a boat it also increases the amount of naval force limit you get per burghers and residents in the province, as well as increasing um, the commerce output, I should mention also. Pathing increases commerce output as well. Par harborage costs are affected by local features. I don't believe there is a local feature here on, uh, on navigatable rivers, but what you get is a major important minor or no natural harbour in provinces. If there is a major natural harbour, you need 50% less units for each unit of harbourage infrastructure. If it's important, it's 33% less. Minor, it's 20% less. If there is a no natural harbour modifier, then you get plus 300% units required. So it becomes inordinately expensive. So be sure to check when you're planning your harbours what the local modifier is and if possible you want to keep building them in those major port locations it also increases the um it, rather it decreases the local ship repair time as well as the local ship uh, building time next there is the capital building the capital building has a flat cost that just like amenities, there is no local modification on that cost. And what it does, if it's in your capital, it gives you a global communication efficiency travel time reduction, meaning that all your provinces in the whole empire are going to have a better communication efficiency as a result. If it's in a non-capital, it causes what's called a local uh, capital. So let's say we built a local capital here. Now the tra And we owned all of these provinces. So we build a local capital here. The communication efficiency leaves Prague, it goes here, it goes here, it goes here, and then when it hits the local capital, it's reduced, so if it's level 1, it's reduced by 8%, as well as getting a boost in base communication efficiency. And then it travels on to here, and the travel time will then act, 
it will be as if the travel time reached this province sooner because it got those bonuses when arriving at this province. That can be really useful for larger empires for helping to manage your communication efficiency. Next, there are garrisons. I know we're blitzing through these, but I think it's helpful to just give a quick overview. Garrisons, they provide local unrest reduction. They increase the local defensiveness, decrease hostile movement speed, as well as granting fort levels. Now, these cost a certain amount based on the radius of the province. The radius of a province is not currently shown in game, but just to give you an idea of how the cost can change based on the size of a province. Constantinople costs 19% more units per rank. But, um, Prague, ah, but old Prague, which used to be about this big, costs about 35% more units per rank. And then Tambov, which I think I picked because it's a particularly big province, costs about 110% more units per rank, which makes sense when you look at it and see it's practically the size of the whole of Bohemia. Of course, garrisoning a larger area, it takes more units and more labor, makes all kinds of sense. And that is all of the different types of, um, of infrastructure. You will note there are other things shown in this screen, which is the level of maintenance for property, not infrastructure. That can be set by setting it here using these buildable things, which can give you 100%, 66%, 30%, or no state maintenance in each province. Bear in mind that that is affected by the um, tax automator. So bear in mind that if you're using the delegated tax code, that will override your maintenance choices here. That is pretty much all you need to know about infrastructure, except, of course, how you build it yourself. So let's take a look at that. So we want to build in Prague. Step one, select Prague. You know how to do that. I have a video on the subject if you don't. Next, go to your decisions and policies and hit build infrastructure. State construction. First, we need to design the project. So, Prague. What do we want in Prague? Well, maybe we want to grow the city. We want to go to rank four amenities. So we're going to design the project. We're going to improve infrastructure. We want to improve amenities. We want to improve it um, to, let's say, rank four, right? Yeah. And we are going to build amenities to rank four. How many extra units do we want? Now, the reason you might want to add a couple of extra units is that uh, maintenance spending might take a moment to catch up. There might be higher costs for the maintenance in the short term because you've just built so much more using the same goods. So typically, you want to add one or two extra units, like so. Let's add three extra units just to be safe. Now we prepare to construct. You can set your parallelism. This is how many units are going to be constructed at once. I don't have specific recommendations about how many you should use. I'm going to go with the max 10 for now. It's possible that might hurt and overwhelm the local economy, but I'll leave that to your testing. So there it is. Construct the project. We can't afford to construct the project, though, so we'll just cheat and give ourselves some cash. We go to design our project and back. We're now able to design it. Excellent. Approximate labor demand per unit per year is 0.5. So if we looked at the province and went to population, we can see that right now there is a labor supply of um, in resident, and that's the uh, urban. There's 205. So there should be plenty, especially because the demand is zero. But that's because we're on the first day of the game, so don't worry about that too much. Uh, you will want to check how much urban... Um, labor there is being provided and making sure that you're trying not to exceed it by too much otherwise you're going to cause wages to spike in the local province and then you hit construct and away it goes there's this icon here which shows you how it's going once things actually start going it will also show how much it's actually demanding in terms of peasantry and residents work and you can compare that to here and make sure you're still on the right track that is how you construct infrastructure. You can do that in multiple provinces at once, as long as you want to take them all to the same level. And it works pretty nicely. I think that is all I need to add, really, on the infrastructure system. There are some complicated calculations about how much exactly different ranks of infrastructure will cost in different provinces. But now that you know the basic outline of what causes things to cost more, I think you're basically on the right track to not have to worry about those specifics too, too much. Again, the wiki on this subject is linked in the description and in the comments of this video do check those out 
and I hope you found this helpful. Any corrections, comments, additions, as always, most welcome in the comments. I will pin any that seem particularly relevant and helpful. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.